Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be going over Unit 7, Topic 4, Stress and Coping. In this video we'll go over different theories of stress and talk about different ways to handle stress. Now to start things out, it's important that we have an understanding of what stress is. If I asked you to describe a stressful situation, I'm sure you would be able to describe something challenging or scary. Stress itself is the process of us perceiving and responding to an event, an experience, situation, challenge, or outside stimuli. We become stressed when our body is no longer in homeostasis because of an external challenge or situation. Oftentimes we perceive stress as a negative thing, but we can see that it can also be positive as well. Notice I said perceive. We can see that stress impacts you by how you think about the stressor itself. For example, let's say you have a huge AP exam coming up, and when you start to think about it, your heart beats faster. The exam itself would be the stressor, and your heart beating faster would be your stress reaction. Now this stress could help motivate you to study for the test and could help focus your attention on the task at hand. But on the other hand, if just thinking about the exam causes too much much stress, it could make you almost feel paralyzed to the point where you feel like you can't do anything and you'd end up studying actually less. Throughout life, you'll experience stress from a variety of different stressors. Each individual reacts differently for each situation. What might be stressful for one individual might be nothing to another. Oftentimes, stress comes from major decisions in life or big events, such as finding a new job, taking a big test, getting married, or doing something we're not used to or unsure of. For example, I'm used to talking in front of people in school and do not experience much stress at all before I teach a lesson. But when I was talking in front of all my friends and family and saying the vows that I wrote for my wedding, Wow, was I stressed. Like I said, your response to stress can be positive or negative. There are terms for each of these. You stress is stress that is perceived as beneficial and is caused by positive life events, such as getting married or going to a job interview or moving into your first home. While distress, which is stress is perceived to be detrimental, is caused by negative life events, such as financial problems or the death of a family member. Traditionally, stress that is short-lived is beneficial, but stress that is prolonged can have more negative impact. Concept Selye looked at how we react to stress and how we manage stress. Through his observations, he named the physiological results of severe stress general adaptation syndrome. He believed that we go through three stages when dealing with stress. The first being the alarm react stage. Here, the stressor that the individual is encountering upsets homeostasis. This is where you will experience your flight or fight response that we learned about in previous videos. After the initial reaction, the body will try to stabilize, but since you're at a higher level of tension, your body may stay at those higher levels levels and adapt to this as the new homeostasis. This stage is known as the resistance stage or adaptation stage. Eventually the body is no longer able to fight back and gets tired at the prolonged response against the stressor and we move into the last stage which is exhaustion. If we experience stress for too long and enter the exhaustion stage we may risk our own health. For example when you're exposed to prolonged stress your immune system suffers. Now it isn't just stress that can impact your immune system. What you eat, your age, your genetic factors all impact the immune system. But if we look at stress, we can see it's been observed that people with high stress are more vulnerable to colds and will often get sick if exposed to the cold virus. Now, since we're talking about stressors and big life events, we need to talk about Kurt Lewin, who identified three different patterns of conflict that individuals use when confronted with a stressful situation or major decision. The first is approach-approach conflict. This happens when an individual is forced to pick between two positive outcomes. For example, if an individual gets into their two top colleges, it must pick which school to go to. The second is avoidance avoidance conflict. This happens when an individual is forced to pick between two negative outcomes. For example, should you stay at a job you don't like or go on unemployment? The third is approach avoidance conflict. This happens when there is only one goal, but it has positive and negative aspects to it. Here there is not one good or one bad option. We're looking at one outcome with both positive and negative aspects. For example, if you found your dream house, but it costs more than you wanted to spend, you have to make a choice to either buy the house of your dreams or keep looking. If you buy the house of your dreams, well, you have that perfect house, but you ended up spending more than what you wanted to. Now, there's also one other way of approaching stressful situations, and that is the multiple avoidance approach conflicts. This is when a conflict or a situation is complex, and an individual is presented with two or more goals or options that each have major positive and negative consequences. You can see each of these approaches look at different stressful situations and cause an individual to react in different ways. And just like that, another topic review video is done. Now comes the time to practice, answer the questions on the screen, and check your answers in the comment section below. And of course, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and checking out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that'll help get you an A in your class and a 5 on the national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.